Uh, we're talking today with uh, uh, Jenny McCutcheon in Lawton, Oklahoma. It is May 28th, 1979, and uh, I'm going to let her spell her name for us so we'll have it correct. M-C-C-U-T-C-H-E-O-N. All right, now will you give us something about your, your background, something about your, your life? Well, I was born in uh, Hollis, Harmon County, Oklahoma, May 6, 1911. My uh, parents had filed on land there, and uh, we, uh, we lived uh, uh, on the farm. And uh, the house that we lived in, uh, my father had had to haul the lumber from uh, Quanah, Texas to uh, build the house. At that time, it was typical of the real early Oklahoma homes, just a large room and what we called a shed room and a half upstairs. And then, of course, later on, we did build a nicer home. I attended uh, the uh, rural schools uh, in our district, which was called uh, Valley View. And uh, I completed the uh, eighth grade there. Now, at that time... In early Oklahoma education, the rural children were not recognized in their work uh, unless they took an eighth grade examination put out by the state. And uh, one of the things that I am especially proud of is that I was the youngest child in the state of Oklahoma to... uh, passed that examination. Then, of course, I went on to uh, high school, and after I finished high school, I was still too young to teach school, so I worked at home for a couple of years and then took a teacher's examination. And uh, at that time, the only uh, certificate which a teacher was permitted to receive with no experience, uh, was a third grade certificate. So I started my first uh, uh, school teaching in a little uh, two-room school up close to a little town called Benson. It was Carl. I taught school for uh, three years. And at that time, the drought and the depression had uh, come along. And uh, uh, the teachers were teaching without any salary. And the last school I taught was, uh, I taught the entire year without being able to cash not one of my paychecks. So then was when I decided to uh, quit teaching school and then uh, took a... uh, business course, and from that time on, my work has been involved in uh, office work, office procedure, and business. All right. Can you tell us now when you came to Lawton and uh, what your job was, and tell us something about your job? I came to Lawton in uh, 1952. In April of 52, it was just sheer accident. Uh, I, at the time, I was living in uh, California and was head of a office. And uh, I woke up one morning and I thought, well, I like Oklahoma and Oklahoma people, and I'm a native of Oklahoma, so I'm going home. And Hollis being a small town, I knew it would offer no opportunity whatever for work. So consequently, I came uh, to Lawton. 
And uh, Mrs. Uh, McMahon, whom I had never heard of at the time, I had an ad in the paper wanting a uh, secretary and uh, bookkeeper. So I applied and uh, was hired uh, by her. Uh, my duties there were to... Uh, Let's uh, talk right here about who the McMahons were. Okay, the uh, McMahons consisted of the husband, Eugene uh, P. McMahon, who was born in uh, Wisconsin, and uh, he went to uh, Clyde, Kansas, and was teaching uh, school there. And uh, uh, Mrs. McMahon, who was Louise Davis at the time, had gone to a girl's uh, finishing school studying uh, music art, and uh, it uh, this school later has become the old uh, Stevens College in uh, Columbia, Missouri. But anyway, she had finished her music uh, course and had gone home, and she wanted to uh, teach music. Well, Mr. McMahon was trying to get a high school started in Clyde, Kansas, so he went to uh, Mrs. McMahon's parents, Mr. and Mrs. J.A. Davis, and asked them if uh, they wouldn't let her go to high school. So she consented to uh, uh, finish her high school education, and uh, during the course of the term, why it was a case of the parent uh, or the teacher and the pupil falling in love, and at the end of the uh, uh, term, they were married and spent their honeymoon in Colorado. Uh, after they uh, uh, married, uh, Mr. McMahon continued to uh, teach, and then uh, and they were married in uh, 18 and... Uh, Ninety-two, and then their son Eugene uh, was born in uh, eighteen and ninety-five. And that was all that the family uh, consisted of. Now, M Mrs. Uh, McMahon had uh, two brothers. Uh, Chad and uh, James. Uh, Chad uh, was never married and died young, and uh, James was married, but there were uh, no children. So consequently, it was more or less just uh, uh, a single family. However, Mrs. McMahon uh, does have uh, uh, on the Davis side lovely cousins in uh, uh, Kansas and uh, Missouri, and I've been privileged to meet them, and they uh, were outstanding people. In fact, it seemed like that the whole Davis uh, clan were talented in uh, music and art, and uh, uh, Ms. McMahon had a cousin, Dr. Linville Davidson, that collected the rare books. And after his death, why, well, his collection sold for over $100,000. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, land had begun to uh, open up here in Oklahoma. And in uh, 1901, Mr. McMahon wanted to come to Lawton and uh, select a uh, home site. Mrs. McMahon and Eugene were to live in uh, Kansas until uh, he came and uh, built uh, the home. Mr. 
Mr. Mike Mayen, uh, it took about uh, five months, uh, and uh, in January of 1902, Eugene and Mrs. Mike Mayen, they came to make their home here in Lawton, and uh, Mrs. Mike Mayen has written a book uh, called Reminiscences and Scrapbooks, and she tells there of all of their early days uh, here. All right, and wasn't she a music teacher while she was here? She was very interested in music. In fact, I have said that her entire life revolved around music, arts, and uh, uh, culture. Uh, she, of course, in uh, 1902, this was still Indian Territory, and she even helped organize the early uh, Oklahoma uh, Indian Territory uh, musical clubs. She was a, a very accomplished musician, and uh, uh, she liked the old masters. I'm fairly certain with the type of music that we have today, why she probably wouldn't agree with, uh, with what we have, because she felt like that uh, uh, music was something that had to be uh, learned diligently, practice constantly, and uh, in fact, as long as she lived, she would practice on her piano two hours each uh, day. Uh, Mrs. McMahon not only served in uh, the Indian Territory musical clubs, but she also helped organize the uh, uh, musical clubs uh, here in Lawton. Uh, she uh, later became uh, state president of the uh, Oklahoma Music Clubs, served uh, two years as uh, president, and it was during her tenure that uh, the first Oklahoma Music News uh, was uh, published. And uh, she had uh, the old etude magazines that uh, go back to uh, 1902. And those are all, uh, of course, uh, in the files uh, there at the McMahon uh, Foundation. All right. Now, what did Mr. McMahon do while he was here in Lawton? Mr. Mike Mayen gave up his teaching career whenever he came to Lawton, and he had an office where he dealt with wills and uh, uh, abstracts and uh, that type uh, of uh, attorney work. And uh, he was very strong on education. In fact, uh, one year here, he was the. Uh, there was an article came out in the paper that he was the only Republican that had ever been elected to the uh, school board here in Lawton. He was on the board that helped build the old junior high school. At that time, it was the uh, Lawton High School, but uh, uh, he. Uh, he was on the board that uh, helped build uh, that uh, uh, building. And uh, in uh, the foundation articles of incorporation, uh, education is stressed very strongly because the uh, McMahon uh, people they loved uh, youth and young people, and uh, they wanted to see them uh, uh, learn and progress. And uh, in uh, 
getting back to uh, some Miss McMahon's uh, musical activities, she uh, went all over the state stressing teaching music in the schools. And uh, at that uh, time, uh, most of the music was given by private music tutors, and she felt like that it should be uh, placed in the school so that every child would have a chance to uh, learn uh, music. Then, uh, uh, getting back then to uh, Mr. McMahon and his uh, ideas on education, uh, Mrs. Uh, McMahon told me that when Eugene became ready for college, she and Mr. McMahon had many long discussions as to what uh, college that uh, Eugene would attend. Uh, they finally settled on OU, and their reasoning was that it was a young university. Eugene was young, that he would probably be meeting uh, men that would later on become leaders in the state, and they felt like that Eugene should grow uh, along with uh, those uh, uh, men that were uh, in education. And uh, some of Eugene's uh, uh, friends were uh, uh, Don uh, Blanding and... Uh, Now, this foundation here is patterned after the Navarra Foundation in uh, Texas. There was some discussion as to whether the foundation should be uh, domiciled in uh, Texas. But now, Mr. McMahon, after his death, he was uh, buried uh, here in Highland Cemetery. They had their lots here. They knew that both of them, after their uh, demise, would uh, be buried uh, there. And uh, they uh, said, Lawton is our home. We love it. We love the people. And we will domicile the uh, foundation in uh, Lawton. The initial grant to the foundation was uh, only $50,000. Now this was, uh, and it was, uh, Miss McMahon shared equal, equally with uh, the amount of money which uh, Eugene put in. Now this was during uh, the war years, or we were getting ready for war, but uh, uh, it was actually established in uh, 1940, and uh, consequently, there was not too much uh, need at that time for uh, a foundation because every person uh, was employed and uh, uh, they had to even look to uh, really figure out how to make uh, grants. In fact, the first grant that was ever made by the foundation was to Edna Williams, who was uh, uh, head of the uh, city mission. During the next few years of Eugene's uh, life, uh, he would add uh, money to the foundation, and at his death, in 1945, uh, he left his uh, entire will, or his entire fortune, to the foundation, which made its value over a uh, million uh, dollars. Now, after Eugene's uh, death, are you speaking of the junior or the senior uh, McMahon? 
Eugene uh, Jr., uh, I believe I stated that his father had died in 1936. Uh, and actually, only the only way you can distinguish when is that Mr. McMahon was Eugene P. and Eugene, the son, was Eugene uh, D. After Eugene's death, uh, Mrs. McMahon, she was uh, left alone there in uh, Fort Worth, and she told me that she kept it a well-guarded secret, but she knew that she was coming back to Lawton and uh, live uh, the remainder of her life. Now, at that time, Lawton did not have the large luxurious homes that uh, we have uh, now and uh, the women's organizations or groups they had no place to meet to uh, to where they could accommodate say 25 or 30 people so mrs mcmahon designed the building herself she she wanted it uh, built for a threefold purpose. She wanted the offices of the foundation housed in the building. She wanted uh, her apartment where she lived to be in the building. And she wanted to build a uh, place where the uh, cultural, educational groups and social groups could meet. So she designed uh, uh, a room large enough to accommodate uh, 200 uh, people. So then after she had uh, uh, made and, uh, and designed her plans and so forth, she uh, contacted the uh, McMahon uh, trustees and uh, wanted to uh, build the building. She said that uh, she felt like that it should be on the lots of their homestead. They had, by that time, they had bought another lot. So actually, they had 714, 716 C. So uh, she wanted the building placed on uh, those uh, two lots. In Lawton, yes. And uh, the building, uh, of course, this was after the war and materials were scarce and so forth, but the building was completed in uh, 1948. Now, I'd like to add here that uh, the foundation, actually, Eugene and his uh, mother, uh, they wanted to establish the foundation in uh, memory of the father. Now, everything concerning the foundation has a uh, tradition behind it. When Mrs. McMahon built the building, she wanted something to remember her parents. Her parents had died and had left her a farm in Kansas. She wanted that farm sold and the proceeds used from that farm to build the fountain in front. And then, of course, after she uh, came to Lawton, why uh, she wanted then to build a uh, memorial to Eugene, which is now the McMahon Memorial Auditorium. And the foundation, uh, of course, is uh, uh, helping to build the Louise D. McMahon Fine Arts Complex on uh, Cameron Campus in uh, uh, her memory. Yes, yes, it, uh, it's uh, in Elmer Thomas Park. Now, uh, this parkland was bought from the Indians, and Mrs. McMahon was on the uh, uh, board which helped uh, to plan the uh, park. And I remember they uh, put a, a road in front of the auditorium, and they called it uh, McMahon Circle. No one will ever know uh, just how pleased 
that that small gesture by the city of Lawton uh, meant to uh, uh, Mrs. McMahon. She was the type person that uh, uh, she didn't expect great rewards or honor for anything that she did than just little uh, uh, things of that nature always pleased her so very much. All right, uh, we come to the duties now. Uh, we'll go to that for just a little bit before we go into some of the other things that this McMahon Foundation has done. When I began working for Mrs. McMahon in uh, 1952, and uh, she explained to me what my duties would uh, be, uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't think that, uh, that I was capable. I had never heard of oil royalties and depletion and stocks and bonds and uh, accrued interest and so forth. But uh, anyway, she seemed to think that I could handle the uh, uh, job, and uh, I was also supposed to be her uh, uh, private secretary. However, at that time, uh, she was so active, she didn't need a secretary. But uh, anyway, I was to uh, uh, book the social gatherings there, the meetings and uh, so forth, keep the office open, keep office hours, take care of the uh, foundation day-to-day uh, -day business. Now, uh, we do have a board of trustees which uh, uh, make the decisions as to uh, how the money shall be spent, but there is an enormous amount of uh, bookkeeping and so forth uh, taking care uh, of all of the oil wells and property uh, which uh, the foundation owns. Uh, your stocks, your bonds, uh, your uh, oil income, and so forth. Sometimes I get amused at people. Uh, some people think that we just have a big barrel of money up there, and all we do is dip out of it. We've got to make money at the foundation in order to be able to uh, give it away. So we have a firm of economic advisors in uh, New York, Brundage, Story, and Rose, that uh, tell us what stocks to buy, what to sell, and uh, so forth. And, of course, uh, Eugene uh, stated very definitely that none of the oil uh, property was uh, to ever be uh, sold. So the foundation is uh, not only a uh, big business, okay. but it also has to uh, generate uh, income. And uh, under the uh, uh, bylaws of the foundation, only the income can uh, be given away, and uh, we, uh, we've we given away, I estimate, around uh, uh, 12 to 15 million since uh, the foundation was uh, first established. So uh, that was my duties, was uh, taking care of uh, the... Uh, uh, business in the office, and uh, then uh, booking the uh, different uh, organizational meetings. Now, after Mrs. McMahon began to age, uh, and uh, she was 93 when she passed away, and in her later years, uh, she would... 
she died in uh, February 8th, 1966. But uh, uh, she would tell me so many things that uh, she wanted me to do. She uh, always said, Miss McCutcheon, keep my home like I, I leave it. And uh, uh, she uh, wanted the building kept open for the uh, cultural and educational uh, meetings. And uh, I remember uh, one time we were standing in the uh, parlor and we were admiring one of her uh, paintings. And she took me by the hand and she said, Miss McCutcheon, maybe somebody, somebody will uh, come by and might want to see my paintings. Well, that are constantly going through the building and uh, taking uh, the tours. I have not moved any of the furnishings. Everything is just as she left it. Uh, and uh, as long as I am there, uh, that is the way that it will be. Now, in uh, 1973, I retired from the uh, uh, business uh, part of the foundation. Uh, I felt like that uh, there were a few things that I wanted to do, so I took over the position as uh, supervisor of the home, uh, which... Uh, uh, it is uh, merely carrying out Mrs. McMahon's uh, oral and written instructions to me before uh, she passed on. Okay, now most of this money was made by Junior, Eugene, all right, Eugene Jr. Now, how did uh, Eugene Sr. make his money? Well, I've heard several stories about uh, the early Mike Mayans here. Uh, I've heard uh, some people say that they were very, very uh, poor. But uh, that was not the case. They were the most saving economical family that uh, I've ever known. Now, you take back in 19 and uh, uh, 9, 10 where a family had $10,000, that was money. So uh, after they moved to uh, uh, San Antonio, uh, Mr. and Mrs. McMahon had made uh, several investments here in Lawton. They, they would loan uh, money on interest. Well, Mr. McMahon was, Mr. McMahon Sr. was ill, so Eugene took over the... Uh, management of uh, their uh, business and uh, whenever Mrs. McMahon uh, uh, passed on her estate was as much as Eugene's was uh, whenever uh, he died but uh, Eugene uh, he would buy and sell stocks and so forth and sometimes Mrs. McMahon would select her own stocks and even keep them uh, whenever Eugene would advise her to uh, sell them. I remember she bought uh, some Sears and Roebuck stock. And Eugene, even before his death, he asked his mother to uh, uh, sell the stock. And she said, well, I like Sears and Roebuck. I like to trade in the store, and I'm going to keep the stock. So she kept it. And whenever she died, her Sears and Roebuck stock that she'd paid $5,000 for was worth $250,000. So uh, uh, it was more or less a uh, uh, mutual uh, uh, thing uh, by Eugene would advise... And if uh, Mr. and Mrs. McMahon wanted to uh, follow his advice, they did. And if they didn't, they uh, 
uh, followed their own uh, inclinations. Did the foundation have a stockbroker? Does it have now? Yes. Uh, we don't have a stockbroker as uh, such. We use a firm of stockbrokers. Now, for years, Merrill Lynch uh, Pierce uh, in Oklahoma City handled all of the uh, buying and uh, selling of the uh, stocks. Uh, now, before the foundation buys or before the foundation sells, we get this advice from our economic advisors in uh, New York. So consequently, we tell Merrill Lynch, or at that time uh, uh, told them what to sell and what to buy. Now later on, A.G. Edwards wanted to put in a uh, stock brokerage office here in uh, Lawton, and uh, they went to the board and uh, the board, in order to help get a new business started in uh, Lawton, began giving the uh, uh, stockbrokers here uh, the uh, foundation uh, uh, business. Sometimes the commissions are quite high, and then other times, why, uh, they, uh, they don't uh, run so high. It's merely whenever... Uh, we're advised to buy and sell is uh, is uh, what the stockbrokers uh, do. So their commissions are are based solely on uh, our economic advisors in uh, New York. All right. Does the board uh, decide when to buy and what to buy and when to sell? No, uh, the, this uh, branded Story and Rose firm in uh, New York uh, City. Uh, in other words, uh, that firm is, is, is the Bible as far as the, the foundation is uh, concerned. Because you take in today's uh, uh, times and uh, with the economics like it is and the economy changing, uh, the, these men that are on the board uh, are merely serving uh, as a good citizen uh, instead of uh, trying to run the foundation uh, uh, business. The McMahons always felt like that it was an honor uh, for a person to uh, be asked uh, to uh, serve on the board. So uh, they draw no salary. So consequently, uh, the McMahons had the foundation so set up uh, that uh, uh, it is one of the smoothest, most organized uh organizations uh, that I've ever been privileged to uh, w uh, work with because uh, you take in the oil. Uh, we, d we do not have uh, uh, people that uh, could advise us what uh, companies to buy royalties in and so forth. And then, too, there's one other thing. You take the McMahon's built the foundation and put up every safeguard uh, that they could to protect uh, their uh, investments. And uh, uh, they followed the practice. Uh, you take Mrs. McMahon, she lived uh, uh, 11, about 21 years after Eugene died. She never varied not one uh, step from uh, the uh, uh, principles of uh, the running of the foundation. We would get our advice and we would follow the advisors and uh, they did not in any way 
want any chance took with their investments. Now you take, uh, there is one word that uh, I'll always uh, remember that Mrs. McMahon, I believe, used the most, and that was the word perpetual. She would say, Miss McCutcheon, this is perpetual. And that's the way they wanted their investments uh, taken care of to where that there would always be an income for the people uh, here in Lawton uh, to uh, carry out their uh, educational and cultural programs. All right, now these people who serve on the board, are all of them uh, living in Lawton or are they scattered around over the country? When the foundation was first organized, it was just organized with a $50,000 grant. The original trustees were five. Uh, uh, Floyd Ross, was, uh, who owned the Coca-Cola Company, was the president. Winchell Barber, the American National Bank uh, owner, was uh, vice uh, president. Lawrence Keegan, who worked in the bank, was secretary treasurer, and Eugene and Mrs. McMahon uh, were the other two uh, members. And uh, they did that because that they would not have a controlling interest in the foundation, uh, that is, as far as uh, voting uh, rights were concerned. Now, Eugene uh, died of uh, cancer. Uh, and uh, when he knew that he was going to have to have this operation, he wrote a letter to the McMahon trustees and said that if anything happened to him, that uh, he wanted the board enlarged to seven, that he would like to see women on the board, that, and then later on to enlarge it to nine, and then uh, possibly 11. Uh, now, the reason for this is that he did not want any one dominating person on the board that could uh, carry out their uh, pet ideas and uh, uh, pet theories because he wanted uh, uh, everyone in Lawton to share and share alike in uh, the... Uh, good works of the foundation. Now, our local trust, our, the men now, we have seven men on the board. They are all uh, local citizens. And uh, in response to your question, uh, as if they lived away from here, uh, when the uh, bylaws of the foundation was written, stated that it would serve uh, Comanche uh, County and Comanche County citizens. So consequently, all of the board members have been uh, selected uh, from uh, Comanche uh, County. And in fact, uh, all of them uh, live here in uh, Lawton. All right. Uh, would you name those people? Is that all right to name them? Oh, yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, Mr. John uh, Shoemaker, who is retired superintendent of schools here, is uh, uh, president. Dr. Donald Angus is uh, vice uh, president. Lawrence Keegan, secretary treasurer. Dr. Charles uh, Grable, board member. Uh, Manville Redmond, an attorney here, Gail Sadler, and uh, Frank uh, Sneed. Now, I always name the board uh, members uh, alphabetically, so, so uh, that is the reason for the order in which that they're given. I, Lift the officers first and then name the others alphabetically. All right. 
do these men decide on who is to get grants? Yes. Uh, you take uh, uh, any group here in Lawton is privileged to ask the foundation for a grant. Uh, then those applications are studied by uh, those uh, men and they decide uh, how the funds will be uh, uh, distributed. Now, in 1969, Wright uh, Patman wanted to try to destroy the uh, foundations, and uh, there were uh, just a lot of very, very stringent uh, regulations put on the foundations. He was the, the chairman of the House and Ways Committee uh, at, uh, in the Congress. And uh, uh, he wanted to destroy the foundation, and they uh, uh, made some uh, pretty stringent laws affecting uh, foundations. Now, used to... Uh, we could make a grant and maybe uh, it would be possibly two or three years before uh, that uh, grant would be uh, issued because uh, probably the group that requested it were trying to get matching funds and, and for other reasons. But now under the uh, new uh, uh, laws, uh, if the foundation makes a grant, it has to be given away uh, within a uh, year. And uh, there are also very stringent rules as to who that the funds can be uh, given to. Uh, under the law, it has to be given to uh, uh, tax-exempt uh, uh, organizations. I know that's the reason that the Lawton Arts for All uh, Council had to uh, uh, reorganize was so that they could receive their uh, grant each year from uh, the uh, foundation. But all grants, uh, in fact, the foundation has never reneged on a, a grant or a, uh, uh, a promise yet. But uh, the board does have guidelines that they uh, have to follow. And uh, naturally, with so many different organizations here in Lawton and all of them competing for the amount which can be given away, which... Uh, will run within the neighborhood of six to eight hundred thousand a year. Uh, it will only stretch uh, so far. So some groups are denied and others are given uh, uh, grants. But uh, uh, I, I really think that the board really tries to uh, uh, partial or allocate the funds uh, equally. To whom would one apply? Which individual, if you wanted a grant? Any organization that is wanting to receive a grant from the foundation, if they would address a letter to Mr. John uh, Schumacher, president of the McMahon Foundation Board of Trustees at Post Office Box 1249, uh, Lawton, Oklahoma, 73502, and state uh, their needs. This uh, letter is received and copies are sent to all of the uh, uh, board members and that way they have an opportunity to study and inquire and investigate into that application before their uh, meeting. Now the board meets the uh, first uh, Monday in uh, each uh, month, and uh, then is when your funds are uh, 
or, or your grants are given to the different uh, uh, groups. Okay, we'd like to name some of the institutions. We've already named, of course, the Foundation and the McMahon uh, Memorial Auditorium, which is a beautiful building and has brought many, has been responsible for many uh, performers coming in here in many different programs. And you mentioned Cameron. Now, would you mention some of the other institutions or organizations which have, which have profited by these grants? You know, you can drive down almost any street in Lawton, and you are going to see buildings or grants that the foundation has either built or enabled buildings to be built. Now, you take uh, the uh, multipurpose center, uh, the foundation uh, helped uh, with that. What is the multipurpose center? Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, this is uh, your different government charitable organizations, the way I understand it that uh, uh, are organized to uh, meet the uh, needs of uh, the uh, needy here in Lawton. And uh, uh, actually, I don't know the uh, uh, different groups that are out there. I do know that Voluntary Action and Neighborhood Services and RSVP and groups of that nature all volunteer groups. So then uh, we leave the multipurpose center and we uh, come down 17th Street to the Marie Deddy uh, Youth uh, Center. Uh, this was built because uh, when the foundation built the building at that time, uh, there was no place to uh, for juveniles which were being detained overnight, there was no place for them to be kept except in uh, jail. Uh, so uh, uh, consequently, that was uh, the reason the Marie Daddy Youth Center was built. Then, two back of the uh, Youth Center, you've got your Comanche County uh, uh, Public Health uh, uh, department and uh, the foundation has spent uh, approximately with uh, they try to get matching funds from the government on those uh, type uh, projects and I would estimate that they've given the city county about uh, half a million dollars uh, to assist them in uh, uh, their projects and uh, then we have the uh, Boy Scouts uh, hut. The foundation furnished uh, matching funds uh, for that. The uh, Museum of the uh, Great uh, Plains, the uh, foundation uh, furnished the money for that. The foundation furnished about half the funds to erect the uh, YM uh, CA building. We uh, recently installed uh, a solar heating uh, in one of the new schools that are being built uh, here in Lawton. Then to Jean Brooks, who is uh, National Executive Director of the Music Clubs, and uh, he wanted to domicile the headquarters in Lawton. So the foundation uh, built him an office, placed it on Cameron campus, and uh, there are just uh, so many grants. Now you take, uh, uh, used to the foundation had a uh, scholarship program. We've given away over fifty thousand dollars in scholarship. Now, this does not include the OU scholarships, which Eugene requested that the foundation give in uh, 
journalism, and uh, we also were giving around 35000 a year to Cameron University for uh, uh, scholarships. The Youth Center, uh, Salvation Army Youth Center, yes, we, uh, we uh, have built a couple of buildings at the Salvation Army, uh, Miller Manor here uh, for Alcoholics Anonymous, and uh, there is absolutely, it is just a, a list of... Uh, Almost any public service in Lawton, you're going to find foundation uh, uh, funds uh, in that. The foundation has not contributed to the uh, uh, Carnegie Library. Now, the Southwest Oklahoma Genealogy Society, uh, the foundation has made a grant to the uh, Southwest Oklahoma Genealogy Society to uh, uh, buy equipment so that we can preserve and protect uh, uh, the uh, records. We paid uh, also paid the loan off on the uh, Maddie Beal home, uh, Lawton's uh, Heritage House, uh, and. Uh, you take uh, the building down there where the little theater is. Why, uh, we've given them money for heating and lighting and air conditioning. And uh, that building was really built uh, several years ago. I'm not familiar with the exact year. But anyway, the uh, foundation gave uh, money to uh, uh, help uh, build uh, uh, that building. I think that was in the beginning of the youth center. Yes, yes, it was a, a, a youth center uh, building. And then uh, the Red Cross, we, we bought the Red Cross building there on uh, uh, 4th and... Uh, uh, Gore, we uh, built the building for the Campfire Girls. We built uh, uh, Camp C Andy, the Campfire Girls uh, summer camp. Uh, we uh, uh, send uh, uh, children to camp each year. Uh, 